हेलो या हेलो सर कैन यू हियर मी टेक्निकल इशू फॉर लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग वी आर स्टार्ट इन टू मिनट्स ओके सर yeah but i you have to give me the permission for sharing my slides yeah I, that way i already you okay, will be giving me later yeah yeah no you will be giving me later or you have already given because i have not even i have already that. given but it's not happening your enter screen yes i could but it's not it's, say, it's saying we cannot display your share content make sure that you are allowed permission to share content okay, and then sir. try again okay sir it's, Hello. हर हर किरण सर ये परमिशन कैसे देंगे इनको ये बोल रहे कि इनको बस परमिशन ही है No, it's not happening.
Hello, sir. Sir, you can now share the content. Hello, it's not happening. Hello, sir. So now you... Yes, I'm not. No, it's saying the same thing. Oh. I guess there might be a button at the bottom of the screen to share your content. I'm doing that one, but still it's not happening. Now what is saying? Uh, it is saying let me see share when i'm going go to application or screen whatever is saying that we cannot display your share content make sure that you you have allowed permission to share content and then try again yeah just Hmm. What to do? Mm, is there any error coming or like oh, you are not having the privilege to share? No, there is no. It's saying that we need to give the permission. No, I, I have already given permission to as a presenter of the event. Like as per the permission rules, I guess yeah. you can share the content. Yeah, I can see that share link when I'm clicking. Mm -hmm. Then he's saying the share your screen, and that mm -hmm. option is kind of your entire screen, application window, and Chrome mm -hmm. tab. Okay, I'm going to your uh, entire screen. If I'm going and sharing, then there is a message is coming. We cannot display your share content. Make sure that you, you have allowed permission to share content. Yeah, so maybe there might be some issues on sharing your Chrome tab. Like there might be some privacy issues there on your PC. Uh, you can see it. What is it? Some message someone is writing. What is it? Yeah, if you can just, if you're fine with it, you can just send the presentation to us and we will you share. You can mail the presentation, the host, they can show and share the screen. Yeah. But I will not be able to. There is a video and other thing. How can send is it, that one? Okay, so but that I think it's going to be just hold on. Huh? You could have tried with me a little long before the actually this meeting. We could have tried this one, and what is the problem? Not that during the meeting at the time of meeting, and already twenty minutes over. Right? You guys could have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, that does not create any issue in earlier meetings we host on this platform. Yeah, but if you don't know, you could have just uh, just one day before or a few hours before, you could have tried and make sure that it's happening instead of this this kind of thing. Um, just, just let me try on my own. Just. Yeah.
interesting. I like see. I guess I am able to share my screen. You all can see my screen, I guess. So, Sir, yeah, I can. I can see your square. screen. What is that? So yes, I downloaded it. Square. Yes, yes, I did. That is fine. I join. I did, and I join. Mm. So I think you can just mail the presentation for the video part. We can, if it's on YouTube, we can share it with the participants, and they can see it later on. For presentation, we can have some syncing and. Even for the video, it will be difficult to play it online itself. Like there will be a lot of lags and all that stuff. So participants, they can watch it later on. We will surely send it to them. Just hold on. I'll try with another computer. What is happening? Yes, we could have tried before you guys are. I even cannot send this is too big files to that email. It's not able to it won't go. Don't use any other platform, right? For this meeting? Mm, actually, it's like it's provided by institute, so we are recommended to use or we can advise to use this platform only. Uh, I guess you are not host of the meeting, so you have all the privileges which are required for sharing the screen and for yes. presenting. Uh, can you uh, can you uh, can you allow J as a presenter there in your system? Hmm? J H J H as a presenter. Can we allow? Yeah, sure. Just wait a minute. Uh, the jointer dot J H at gmail dot com. J H is okay. written. Yeah. Yeah. Can you and just shift? Yeah. yeah. I'm to present. 
Yes, now you can see your screen. Yes, sir. Now we can see your screen. Can you can you see it? Mm -hmm. Yes, we are able to see your screen. Now you are also able to hear you. I guess. Oh. Okay. Let's stop now. And if for the audience, if anyone is facing an issue, you can please uh, check our YouTube link as well. I have put it in the chat box. It's I will put it again. Okay. Check it from there as well. Should I start? Mm, I guess yes. Or people have been waiting for so long. So. Yes. Yeah. So sorry for this inconvenience. Uh, I think we could have tried before, yes, yes. but anyway. Yeah, so uh, whatever. For facing the to the audience and to you as well. So yes. now you can surely start with the session. So, but anyway, uh, thank you uh, for having me, uh, and thank you for organizing this antimicrobial awareness week. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, talking to you all uh, on this uh, particular topic, uh, curbing antimicrobial resistance and infection. Uh, in the initial uh, this uh, discovery of antibiotics in 1940s and 50s, uh, which has drastically uh, changed the, the medical treatment. And, but after using these antibiotics over the years, especially misusing and overusing of antibiotics. Uh, bacteria develop resistance to this, uh, all kinds of antibiotics, whatever we have at this moment. And the situation has arisen to such an extent that doctors sometimes have a very little option to treat this infection caused by anti uh, the resistance bacteria, or sometimes they don't have any option to treat the uh, patients and save their life. Therefore, this well, resistance now becoming is like a global problem. It's not a problem for only a poor country or developing country, um, uh, but it's a problem for other developed countries like US and in Europe and other places. And if you see that at this moment, uh, this antimicrobial resistance is causing more than 700,000 uh, death annually. And it has been estimated that more more than 10 million a death is going to happen by 2050. And if it has not taken care, it is going to uh, cost huge amount of financial burden uh, by 2050. And it's unfortunate that uh, India has been identified uh, one of the uh, places where it is contributing to this antimicrobial resistance uh, measure. And if you look at that, there are various causes uh, and reasons uh, for this, uh, where we are today, uh, right now. Um, one, of, uh, one of the reason is uh, uh, for over-prescribing antibiotics, uh, where doctor uh, prescribing antibiotics where it's not required. Suppose you have a viral infections, 
and doctor prescribe antibiotic and we know that if you take antibiotic it's not going to do anything to the viral infection but sometimes that is happening and there are many other reasons hiding within this uh, category that i'm not going to talk about much and also we are well, we are also responsible when doctor are prescribing medicine uh, antibiotics and we start taking this antibiotic we're supposed to take a particular course like a week or 10 days whatever doctor prescribe what happened most of the cases that after two or three days patients are feeling better and they stop taking this antibiotic and that is a huge problem okay after sometimes when you get sick again this when try to take this antibiotic it doesn't work again. So that is a huge problem uh, that we are as a patient we are creating and then there is also unnecessary antibiotic use in agriculture and from other uh, industry where tons of antibiotic has been used not for the treating the uh, th uh, infection but for the um, promoting the growth uh, of this type of animals and which has a financial benefit and they are using misusing this antibiotic in here uh, for that purposes and that actually leading to the cause of this antibiotic resistance also there is a problem with the uh, in infection control uh, in hospital and clinics uh, many times what happen we have uh, we don't have the infection we have certain diseases we go to the hospital and but hospitals are not equipped uh, to take care and we get the infection from the hospital and this is not happening only in developing country but even developed country like uh, in us where we say that they are, have sophisticated healthcare setup but still there are millions of people are getting this hospital acquired infection and i'll talk about little later about this particular thing so that is a problem also taking care of the uh, things uh, poorly in a hospital and other places and there are also the hygienic and other sanitizing practice and i hope uh, uh, but covid this uh, currently uh, ongoing pandemic uh, is uh, taught us has taught us how to take care of our hygiene and other things we are doing continuously wearing masks um, washing our hands and all that times and uh, we will hope that we will continue learn from here and try to take care of ourselves in a much better way than we generally used to do and then also a uh, lack of rapid um, test um, many times uh, when you go to doctor doctor doesn't have anything uh, you know on your t their table that they can just see that the patient and immediately can tell the uh, the way that you have a bacterial viral infection or what kind of infection that patients are having or what what kind of drugs that can be prescribed to the patient so the patient uh, the disease can be cured so they don't have that kind of rapid test and even if you are from a um, a city or town where you have sophisticated hospital labs even doctor collect the samples and send it to those labs and it takes at least like two to three days actually get the information the way that you have a bacterial infection what type of infection and what what kind of uh, drugs can actually uh, actually can cure uh, your infection so there is a huge problem and many of these actually causing collectively to this anti antimicrobial resistance so therefore we we all understand that this infection uh, diseases happen uh, uh, because of this microorganism and there are various techniques various sophisticated instruments are there to view and we know their structure the way they kill uh, they work they infect and all other, uh, other information that we have but if i take you a little uh, back in sometimes even in 17 uh, beginning of 17th century uh, we did not know about uh, the anything about the microorganism the organism which causes the diseases only in 1676, where the gentleman um, has have seen and given this name a microorganism or through this uh, his uh, through this his own microscope, this kind of microscope, and he could see that there, there, he said that there are tiny uh, looks like tiny animals. He said, and he has coined the name is called the animalcules, and and the same time during the similar time, the another gentleman Robert Hook. He has also have uh, seen this uh, microorganism through his own uh, microscope, and then he has coined the term uh, as cell. Okay, so we know uh, that around that time we know about what is micro microorganism, and this information is known, but nobody knew whether they can cause uh, the diseases. And this tiny, then nobody is to believe uh, that you know 
uh, this so that this tiny uh, organism actually can cause the disease to the human or any other animals or any other living systems and that's why people used to believe that this is actually caused by uh, through the bad air which is called miasma theory but in the late uh, around uh, you know, in 19th, uh, 19th century uh, where the, the jump theory has been established uh, uh, through the various discovery uh, scientific discovery by different pioneer scientists and they established that actually this is and caused by this microorganism and this organism can not only cause the disease to animals and other living uh, uh, living uh, uh, organism but also uh, uh, living beings but also the human beings as well and causes the disease and i'll tell you some of the story uh, some of the um, uh, scientists uh, who has actually um, contributed to establish this uh, germ theory and which can cause disease. Um, the, there are many many people have contributed to this uh, the, to establish this one through the various observation, various, various um, these, uh, discoveries. I have mentioned few of them here. I'll take through. For example, in 1947, uh, this Hungarian physician Samuel Lewis, who had initiated uh, this hand washing or washing of medical instruments. And he has established that it can reduce mortality uh, rate in pregnant women during the delivery from 18 to 1 person. Um, but unfortunately, nobody is to believe him. Nobody is to, they, they is to think their colleagues, scientific medi medicine practitioner, they is to think that what this nonsense this person is talking, uh, how uh, they, they can take care of the infection and this uh, can take and cure uh, or prevent uh, uh, from the death of this one and but after after uh, because that time he did not have any explanation or anything uh, how that hand washing can take care and right now we know all those things the how hand washing can help us to not to get the infection but that time nobody uh, uh, nobody has any clue and he could not have uh, any explanation to that so the, but after his death only people started giving importance uh, that whatever observation he has made and which can take care and be uh, you know be, uh, um, save the people life, and that's why he's to call as a father of infection control. In another gentleman uh, in 19, uh, 1854, uh, English physician, uh, he has traced uh, this cholera outbreak that happened in England and with the water sources, and he has connected, established this how the infection and this uh, the source uh, of water and how the water can be actually the actually can be uh, used as a carrier. Uh, not the actually the causing the diseases, but the microorganism present in water, which is actually causing the diseases. So he established first time and said that there's no air, bad air, the air or water actually cannot cause the disease. The microorganism which is present in air or water, that is actually causing diseases. And then another uh, person, 1860, uh, Louis Pasteur, you know very well about his contrib uh, contribution in, uh, in the field is enormous. Uh, to the take uh, vaccination or microbial fermentation or pasteurization that we using at this moment daily basis in at a household in a, in our house or in a defined uh, food industry that you heat the uh, for example milk and and quickly uh, cool down and that can be kept it for a long time um, um, and uh, uh, so that can uh, uh, prevent this infect from the infect uh, contamination and he has established. Uh, that uh, this without the contamination, the microorganism cannot develop. Here, if you have a sterile uh, 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 media where the microorganisms can grow, but if you have a closed system, then it cannot go and uh, uh, um, contaminate or cannot grow the bacteria, cannot this microorganism. But same thing, if you have the same sterile and if it is open, the neck is open, then the microorganisms go and can uh, contaminate. Therefore, the contamination can happen through the microorganism nothing to do with the media that is present uh, in the in the in the in the bottle so therefore the he and that he has contributed many other way and he's been called as a father of microbiology there is another person uh, in 1870 uh, joseph lister uh, is a british surgeon he has uh, promoted this uh, antiseptic surgery he used to wash and clean uh, his um, all the surgical uh, instrument through the carbolic through carbolic acid, the phenol, 
and and also the is to clean the wound through phenol and which can decrease drastically the post surgical infection and and that has been called as he's been called as a father of modern surgery so there are many other uh, scientists many other uh, uh, who have contributed to establish this uh, germ theory that organism actually causing the diseases and to the human and um, not the bad air or water as such is causing the diseases so therefore we at this moment we all know the infectious diseases can be spread uh, through the contaminated food or water if you don't have the pure clean water or food then you will get uh, infected there are contaminants that are certain uh, type of diseases or can organism can be uh, spread through the blood or body fluid uh, like hiv and others there will be certain type of uh, 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 organism can be spread through um, airborne when you cough or sneeze like even influenza even the covid uh, that is going on at this moment through droplet or there are many other uh, way uh, there are certain diseases like uh, malaria uh, or um, dengue which can be um, spread through the vector uh, through the mosquito another way and but if you see the uh, there is another way who is spread the uh, uh, infection which is called direct contacts and many times what happen bacteria and other pathogens get deposited onto the surfaces and we get the infection once we come in contact with those contaminated surfaces and which is causing more than uh, 75% of total infected disease spreading um so that is very very uh, uh, serious things and if you look at at this moment even the respect to the covid uh, who is uh, people have shown that this virus can live on to the various different kind of surfaces to days to hours to days and that uh, from there people can get an uh, infection even not only through the airborne or droplets but it can also through this surface associated infection and this type of uh, as i said this type of uh, infest spreading the surface related spreading can be very uh, common in hospital where the bacteria and other other kind of uh, um, organism can be deposited onto this type of surfaces like operating room surgical area instruments surgical tables and ventilator many other things or even there there the device or catheters uh, that doctor is or implant that is the doctor used for the different purposes to the patient body and they are highly on to this type of contaminate uh, contamination and get the infection so but this is very 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 common in hospital and if you look at there is a um, another uh, serious issue is called hospital acquired infection or healthcare associated infection where the patient as i mentioned there are some many times you go to the hospital for some other disease to have take a help from a doctor but once you get admitted and uh, and then you get uh, the infection from the hospital there are many kinds of patients are associated they are which having the de defined type of uh, infection and also there are the surfaces that i spoke about virus or bacteria get uh, attached on to those type of surfaces then this uh, when the patient this uh, patient who is not having also this infection then they go get admitted or defined type of uh, help they need and they go but once they go they get this infection so that is called a uh, healthcare associated infection acquired infection or nosocomial infection as an infection or infection that have been caught in hospital only but are secondary to the original condition of the patient you might have another original condition that's why you went to the doctor which was not present and incubated at the time of infection this admission this uh, infection was not there during the time of admission it was something else but you got the infection later on and if you see that as i said in a, in us where the sophisticated healthcare setup is there but still more than 1.7 million infection happen and there are uh, 99000 associated people uh, die because of that and if you look at every 100 hospital patient uh, like seven in developed country and 10 in developing countries get infection this hospital acquired infection so that is very serious issue and more, many of these hospital acquired infection are associated with the biomaterial associated infection there are many type kind of catheter or is suppose urinary catheter or central nervous catheter or different orthopedic plants or many other biomaterials that is doctor use for the patient for various purposes and you can see the huge amount of urinary catheters has been used for central uh, venous catheters are being used and they are prone to this type of infection because when doctor put this one during the operation time or in a hospital this full of bacteria and other and then 
these bacteria, if you get deposited onto there, they start developing, growing onto this type of devices, this type of catheter, this type of materials. And once that happens, we call they form the biofilm. That this is, you can see, this is the surface, any surface, for example, bacteria first get attached onto the surface. Then there will be the, this, there will be cell addition happen onto this one. They are called proliferation. They are multiplying onto those uh, catheter or surfaces and producing more and more bacteria and their different type of materials they covered with this type of onto and the height within this this uh, this uh, within this biomass we call it within this biofilm and once that happened the bacteria those antibiotics whatever uh, uh, doctor generally prescribe to take care of this infection cannot be taken cannot be uh, used for treatment of this type of biofilm associated infection because the most of these antibiotic cannot penetrate this mass this could the bacteria produce to cover themselves uh, and they cannot penetrate and cannot kill the bacteria and then there are different kind of bacteria within this one which is difficult to actually kill them with the known antibiotic for example i have given here uh, uh, this one one um, uh, from the one patients the pacemaker has been you know, put it uh, there uh, to that patient it was very successful the patient was the person was living so um, without any problem and after many years actually that person having some elbow injury from there that infection happened and has gone to the body and the bacteria start accumulating and forming the biofilm onto the pacemaker and once that happened even after the uh, huge amount of antibiotic therapy doses they've given doctor given but they could not save his life because once as i said that once this biofilm formation happened onto the medical devices or this type of catheter, this bacteria, or this antibiotic cannot penetrate and kill these pathogens and cannot cure the disease and the patient dies. So this is a huge problem, not only the bacteria which already develop resistance, but the problem uh, of the associated with the bacterial infection in, in our body. And this type of biofilm, not only the problem uh, onto this abiotic surface like this type of catheter or implants, but also the biotic surface in our various tissue and organs, this bacteria form this type of biofilm. And once they form this biofilm, this antibiotic doesn't work and cannot take care of the infection. But I'll take you know, there are few bacteria here I want to mention, which are actually been uh, considered as a um, uh, priority pathogens by World Health Organization. And some have been uh, classified as a critical pathogen. They're highly resistant, drug resistant bacteria. They're resistant to all kinds of drugs. There are like Acetonobacter, Bovani, uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and there are many. There are certain bacteria which has been classified as high pa uh, priority pathogens like Enterococcusium or Staphylococcus, which causes many, many diseases in the skin and other heart disease, uh, infection, lung infection, many other. There are certain bacteria has been classified as a medium priority. So these are the pa pathogens you can see. They are highly resistant to many antibiotics which are known many drugs which are known in the market right now and some of the cases this type of uh, bacteria actually we don't have any options to treat them to kill them because they have developed resistance to almost all kinds of uh, um, um, uh, drugs um, so i'll talk about now how to take care of this type of infection so before i go to the antibiotics let me talk about the uh, the how the concept has come how this that uh, 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 that we call as a magic bullet the concept of chemotherapy has been given by this gentleman paul edris where he is to work with the different type of chemicals dye to stain different cells and all his he thought if the chemicals can attach to a germ and stain it can it also attach and kill them so he was uh, it came to his mind that if it is can stain the uh, it can uh, attach and uh, stain it why it cannot kill it and if it is the molecule which can kill this germ or microorganism, but not killing, not having any toxicity to a uh, human body. So that would be the wonderful thing. So that is he's called as a magic bullet, magic bullet theory, something molecules which can go and bind to the uh, bacteria and kill them selectively. Now, in 1909, they have shown that this kind of molecules, uh, the arsenic kind come from a defined molecule is called salberson. He has shown that this type of molecule actually can uh, can go and take care of uh, this repellent patient. This is, this is sexually uh, 
uh, transmitted bacterial uh, disease. And first time established that some molecules can go and kill it. And that started with the, that's called as the birth of chemotherapy, the whole concept of the molecules can go and kill the pathogen that has been established and has been got, got a Nobel Prize later on with the various other uh, reasons. Um, but his, the, the whole thing, the idea uh, came um, from his, uh, his uh, findings, his observation that molecules can go and kill it selectively can, and then can take care uh, the infection. And after that, there are many kinds of uh, antibiotics has been there, different kind of molecules has been uh, developed or isolated. Some are which we call as antibiotic. Some are uh, called as a, like synthetic molecule, which can be synthesized as a chemist in the lab, like a sulfonamides, quinolones, or oxalinone. Or there are there are different molecules, there are the different antibiotics, which is natural, which can be isolated uh, from the different even organism to different other uh, other other living system. And then this type of more drug uh, can be uh, can go and kill the bacteria, as it can go and bind and do certain things and then kill the bacteria and we call as antibiotic. So this can be classified either synthetic antibiotic or natural antibiotic. And there are a huge amount of semi-synthetic compound from the natural compound uh, medicinal chemistry has made and, um, um, uh, and uh, discovered and uh, they can take care of the infection. But most of this uh, um, antibiotic, you can see different classes of antibiotic has been discovered during this uh, era. Um, this is called is a golden era where most of these classes of antibiotic was discovered and we were so happy about that any any disease any infection disease or any and uh, the caused by bacteria and fungal protozoa can be taken care uh, but and that's why there is no this is a period where there is no uh, new classes of antibiotic was discovered because this was not necessary and there are because we had a huge amount in, but after that once bacteria developing resistance to this antibiotic then, uh, then uh, you can see that is a different scenery. There are a few more has come after that. And I will take you through also how this is happening. And these are the people who has contributed. There are many people who have contributed, got the Nobel Prize. You said that this person has got the Nobel Prize in uh, 1939 for developing this uh, sulfonamides. Then you know Alexander Fleming discovered the uh, first beta lactam antibiotics. And these guys all together got the Nobel Prize. Then a Waxman who got streptomycin in another class of uh, antibiotic and got the Nobel Prize. Okay, these are the uh, development of antibiotics. Which, now, the question is how this antibiotic actually kill the, uh, kill the um, um, bacteria. There are antibiotics can be classified uh, depending on to the, the way they kill the bacteria. Some of the antibiotic kill the bacteria by inhibiting their cell wall. Bacteria has a cell wall. They have a cell membrane they have a cell wall, like our wall in the, uh, the, in the building that we make. Similar, they have a cell wall to protect. Okay, and then this kind of antibiotic, like beta-lactam anti-penicillin or glycopeptide, they go and actually inhibit, so the bacteria cannot produce this cell wall or destroy their cell wall so that they die. There are antibiotics which can inhibit the protein synthesis. Some of the antibiotics, tetraaminoglycans, there are many others which can go and inhibit their protein synthesis. If they cannot uh, synthesize their protein, they'll die. They cannot survive. There are some antibiotics which can inhibit the synthesis of RNA. These are the biomacromolecules within this, um, their, uh, their body, so that if you can inhibit their synthesis, they'll die. There are molecules, pseudoquinone, for example, inhibit the DNA structure and function of the bacteria. There are molecules which can inhibit the folic acid synthesis. And there are some molecules which can take care of, interact on with this, uh, this uh, membrane that I spoke about. They have a wall and they have a membrane. Some are inner membrane, some of the outer membrane. For gram-negative bacteria, they have an outer membrane. Bacteria can be classified into two categories. One is gram-positive bacteria, another gram-negative bacteria. And some of these molecules can specifically act on to the, this gram-negative bacteria, which is very difficult to treat, kill them. Uh, and so therefore, these different antibiotics actually kill bacteria a different way. Um, but after using this, as I said, uh, after using this antibiotic over the years, bacteria now develop resistance to this antibiotic. And if you look at that, the way how they have developed resistance to this antibiotic, some of the antibiotics, they are more, these bacteria modifying their cell uh, membrane or outer layer envelope such that the antibiotic cannot come in before they come, you can see that they're not able to enter to the, their body. 
if it is not able to go inside, then how they can inhibit the protein synthesis, DNA synthesis, or whatever, the way I explained you. They cannot. They have to go in to do inhibit that. They have to go inside. The first barriers they are changing such that they are not able to go get in into the, uh, their body. Even they are coming in, bacteria are producing some type of enzymes which can destroy this antibiotic. So that the antibiotics, uh, before they go and act, they have been uh, means uh, destroyed, modified. And certain antibiotic can be modified further so that it becomes useless. They cannot do go and kill the uh, bacteria. Certain cases, the bacteria antibiotic go and bind to the certain target into their bacteria. But now the bacteria changing their target size, so the antibiotic cannot go and fit into that, cannot bind it, so that they become a resistance to that one. Certain cases, they are doing that through the uh, palm. Bacteria are producing some kind of palm. As soon as this antibiotic is coming in, before they go and bind to the target, they go and uh, they, are throw, they have been thrown out from their body through the eplax palm. And this is one of the major uh, reason for gram-negative bacteria to develop resistance to this one, in addition to the many other, uh, other reasons that I spoke about. So various ways actually bacteria developing resistance to uh, these antibiotics. And then you know, where, right now where we are actually, most of the cases we don't have any drug to take care of this one. This is the data we have created. Uh, you can see the different the bacteria we have taken from the hospital from uh, Bangalore. And we try to uh, check whether they, are, they have been, can be killed by this all known drug. So these all the ampicillin, ciprofloxacin, erythromycin, the different drugs we have used, we can see the bacteria cannot be killed the, the, uh, by this antibiotic, only except these two um, uh, drugs, the cholesterol and tigerslain. And uh, sometimes this drug, uh, bacteria also resistant to this, either one of this one, and in some cases, both. If it is bacteria resistant to this as well, both of them, then they are actually there is no uh, option at this moment to treat the infection. And that is happening. Or uh, in a hospital, if you look at not only in India and other places in the world, many cases that uh, uh, we are having, uh, patients are coming with the bacteria which uh, cannot be killed uh, by any of these known antibiotics which are at this moment in the market. And we have, so therefore, the antibiotic resistance is keep on going up and up. Uh, and whereas if you see then the, the, the drug antibiotics, the approved drugs coming into the market is drastically reducing over the years. That's three decades, huge amount, decrease of antibiotic uh, and the approval that we made by uh, the uh, FDA. Therefore, one way it is uh, resistance going up, but the other way the antibiotic, new antibiotics coming to the market is uh, very uh, becoming less and less. And then that is creating huge problem. And we are reaching to the play where uh, pre-antibiotic era, uh, like we won't be having any option to treat the infection. And that is where we are going through. Now I'll take you through that, that some of the, our work that uh, how we have been taking care of this kind of uh, drug resistance uh, bacteria, this antimatter resistance uh, through our study. We are trying to do in two uh, broadly two different way. One is how we can prevent the spread of this type of infectious diseases, whether in a hospital or this biomedical device related infection. Um, and another thing, if you have an infection, can you have the better drug to treat them, okay? In case of preventing, we have been trying to define kind of polymer, polymer and nanocomposite uh, system, which can be actually coated onto the defi defined type of surfaces, include the biomedical devices, and we could show that when you spray the bacteria in the normal surface, bacteria still uh, alive and contaminate surface, but same thing on surface, when you coat with our compound, bacteria cannot live on this comp uh, the surface. And you can say this is the fluorescent where you can see the huge amount of bacteria biofilm formation happen, the huge thickness, like 12 to 13 micron thickness of the bacteria biofilm. When you coat it our surface, you don't see very few bacteria can be seen onto the surface. We have been working on different type of uh, polymeric hydrogen, we call it a sealant also, which can deliver the drug to the actual places where the infection happened uh, over the time and then can take care of the infection, but it also can take care of their own healing, uh, the heal the wound very fast and can take care of the other properties that will, we have been working on this also. I'll give you one example. And as I said that we've been working on de developing different type of drug, whether semen synthetic, the glycopeptide antibiotic, uh, which from the natural uh, drug, we have modified the drug and such that we can take care of this drug resistant bacteria, which is called vancomycin resistant bacteria. We have been also working with the molecules we, are, we call as adjuvant, 
which can be given in combination with those old antibiotics which doctors are not prescribing because bacteria already developed to resistance to that one. It's not effective. But when you give this in combination with our compound, they can cure the disease. They can kill those drug resistance. We'll talk, we have been working on that. We're also working on the uh, small molecule, um, so completely synthetic molecules never existed in this world. And these molecules can take care of uh, those infection and they are especially infection with the biofilm deleted infection. Once it happened, the biofilm, most of this known antibiotic cannot penetrate and kill the bacteria. Whereas these molecules, new molecules can penetrate and kill the bacteria, both in vitro and in vivo, we have shown. This is a mice uh, skin infection where a huge amount of bacterial infection, when we are given with this, we can see that the skins are completely cured and can take care of the infection. We have been working on various approaches. We have taken our lab and tried to work on this and take care of this infection and register. In case of antimicrobial coding, we have been developing different type of molecules, such as this, this type of molecule, which can be impregnated onto the different type of uh, surfaces and can take care of the surface associated infection. And this molecule, small molecule, can release from the surfaces and kill the bacteria. So we call release based mechanism. There are also, we have developed the um, like a polymeric big macromolecular system. This molecule can be solubilized in any organic solvent and go and paint it onto the surface that you want, any, any surfaces. And we can see that when you paint it on the surface, the bacteria cannot live onto the surface, completely kill. Whether it, and, you, and you can see both in you know, this one and also the confocal microscope, I can see that bacteria can kill. But if you have a normal surface, we can see that it is a huge amount of contamination happen. We are also uh, like and this kind of six molecule where the bacteria come on contact onto the surfaces and kill it. It's called contact based uh, mechanism. Where we are also working on the both contact and release based mechanism in one system where we have put it with this type of molecules where the molecules can release from the surface and even if the bacteria is coming onto the surfaces, it can be killed. And both the things and we have been working. We're also working on the uh, surfaces which can be covalent and modified uh, with the different molecules. And if bacteria come in contact with this surface, it can be killed. And I will tell you that some of this uh, recent work on this particular thing. So where we have developed uh, the molecule, which can be covalently attached through UV radiation uh, to this type of surfaces that doctor and normal people use at cotton surfaces, apron that doctor or healthcare uh, uh, people use, or the mask or gloves, different type of poly, uh, polymer surfaces that is in use. And we have coated our molecules onto the surfaces. And we can see when we coat it, we could see that it can kill completely. This is the normal cotton surface. Huge amount of bacteria, you can see the lawn of bacteria. When you coat it onto the surface, you don't see any bacteria is alive onto the surfaces. And if this is the ACM image where you can see huge amount of bacteria, live bacteria, and they are nice structure. Whereas you coat it onto this one, is completely killed. The bacteria cannot survive. Same thing, it can kill the fungal. We can see that the bacteria fungal will leap onto the normal surfaces. When you coat it with our compound, we can see that it can kill. And it also can kill the influenza virus. We can see the huge amount of viruses are present in normal surfaces. But when we are coated with our surfaces, you put the bacteria, viruses doesn't uh, alive, it's not alive. You can kill completely. <coughs> I'm sorry. And you done, now we have also shown that it can, uh, this type of surfaces can kill uh, even uh, uh, COVID, SARS CoV 2 virus. And, um, and we are working together with uh, other collaborate, uh, collaborator uh, in the other uh, countries and hopefully uh, this can be used for uh, coating or different type of materials uh, which is uh, doctors and other people using at this moment. So I'll take you to another system where we work on this type of high, uh, this one polymeric gel which can be used uh, for cure this um, eye infection and eye injury. What happens if there is an injury happen? There are two kinds of things as soon as injury happen, and uh, that can lose the pressure. The eye has a particular pressure, okay, which is a 12 to 22 mm of mercury. But, uh, but if the eye is not holding that pressure, what happens? People becoming um, blind, okay? And then any injury is associated with the infection. Therefore, if you have developed a materials like polymer solution, you inject to the place where it is happening, the injury happened. As soon as you inject, it can seal it. And then it can he help to stop bleeding. It can hold this tissue together, which is called a bioadhesive. It can heal the wound, and then also it can be in anti-infective. It can take care of the infection. And we have shown with the cornea, you know, human cornea um, um, uh, model we have done uh, with the collaboration with the LV Prasad Eye Hospital, where we can show 
that when we infect the human cornea and then give it our molecules, we can see that they can take care of the infection drastically compared to the uh, normal, uh, this one, control. And then we have shown uh, here uh, that um, it can take care of the pressure. This is where the human cornea has been taken. And then, sorry, it's not playing. It's not, it won't play. Sorry, it won't play, but it, we can, uh, uh, you can trust me that uh, we have shown that we have taken cornea, injured this one, uh, make, and then put the, our um, gel. And we could see that this particular can hold even, even up to 70 mm of mercury, which is much higher than uh, the uh, normal eye pressure. But uh, when you have a similar injury, you could put another cornea without putting a gel. You can say even up to 10 mm mercury, now it cannot hold. Everything leaks out, and that is a creating problem. So therefore, our, this type of materials can be used, not only take care of the infection, but also can take care of the, uh, uh, the pay eye pressure and take care of the wound. And that is we have been working. We have been working with, uh, uh, the, uh, as I said, the defined glycopeptide antibiotics like vancomycin. And this is a drug uh, has been given for uh, treating the gram-positive bacteria infection. And what happened, this kind of drug, they go and inhibit this cell wall. Bacteria has a cell wall, like our wall, uh, these uh, bricks that we have, and then we put the cement. The bacteria also have the similar type of wall, like a sugar, and they have a, put the cement is a peptide bond. Now, this particular antibiotic, when you take, this goes to this, actually bind to the, this, uh, actually this peptide, which hanging to, to the wall, so that, that this, uh, this inhibit the enzymes, which cannot actually go and put the cement. And uh, that, that doesn't give the stability up to the wall, bacteria wall, and that bacteria actually die. But after using this antibiotic over the years, as I said, bacteria develop so that they are modifying this peptide they are in the body so that the, this drug cannot go and bind strongly to this uh, peptide so that they can still make the wall and the drug is becoming useless and bacteria become, uh, and these kind of bacteria are coming like vancomycin resistant enterococci, staphylococci areas, and this is creating this high priority pathogens according to WHO at this moment, and we need to take care of this one. And we have been working uh, to various modifications as a semi-synthetic uh, drug. We have modified this uh, parent's drug such that either we can increase the binding constant to, this, uh, uh, to the target peptide so that it now it can, even if they have modified, still it can strongly bind. Or uh, we can uh, not only this molecule inhibiting this one cell wall, we have modified the molecule such that now it can also go and target that cell membrane. So new molecule, this molecule now can take care of both. It can inhibit cell wall as well as, while the parent drugs cannot take care of this, interact with the cell membrane. It can only inhibit the cell wall. So by doing that, we can show that it can take care of those type of drug resistance strain. Then we also have put it system where both the things can be put it in one system increase the binding constant to the cell wall as well as acting on to the cell membrane. And we could show this, uh, this will be much effective even. But thing is that we have shown that some of this has a lot of challenges uh, to synthesize in a high, large scale into that. But some of the molecules have shown that it can be synthesized in a large scale and we are doing some more work on to this one with the company setup and then try to see whether it can take care of the infection. This is something, uh, another kind of modification, semi-synthetic modified uh, uh, modification that we have done, such that this kind of molecules, once you do it, this, uh, this inhibit the cellular biosynthesis very strongly by, the, the, by targeting the guy who was bringing, bringing the bricks that are to make the wall, bacteria need to make the wall, but that everything has been synthesized within their body. Now another guy actually bring this speakers outside of their body and make the wall. And this modification actually, Hampered in going and targeting the guys who is bringing this wall uh, from brick from outside, inside to outside and can inhibit. So various way we have shown uh, over the years that it can be uh, take care of this vancomycin resistant, this kind of drug and this kind of infection. I'll take you to the another system that we are trying to work on uh, this uh, to take care of this super bugs we call as a gram negative super bugs. And they have uh, developed resistance. There are many reasons. One of the you can see that they have a uh, extra membrane to the, their body so that the, the, the antibody, many antibiotics cannot go inside to their body uh, because cannot penetrate this layer. And uh, that's why the impermeability of outer membrane uh, that is becoming uh, the many antibiotics cannot do that one. 
they are becoming impermeable because of this layer they have. And this is a very special type of lipid layer because they have they have different type of lipids onto that their membrane and so that their antibiotic cannot be uh, gone inside. And even if they go, uh, what happened, uh, this uh, antibiotic can be thrown out. As I said, they use different type of pump into their body in the membrane so that as soon as it comes, it, is, it can be thrown out. So what we are trying to do, we are trying to develop a small molecules uh, which we call as adjuvants, and this molecule can trigger little bit effect onto their membrane here, or act onto something that energetics of this membrane, such that this pump doesn't work. Pump, pump will be there; it cannot work, cannot throw out, and then it's also act onto the membrane so that this antibiotic which cannot come in now they can come in. And we have shown that with the combination with our compound, with those uh, those drug which is no longer being used. Uh, by doctor now if you use with our compound they are highly effective against this type of super bugs uh, which is which is mentioned as a critical pathogens and we have done shown as a different antibiotics and we in combination we can show that it can indeed it can take care of this uh, this particular thing this for example we can see this antibiotic only it cannot take care this uh, this uh, cannot kill the bacteria this is our compound alone it cannot take care of the uh, bacteria, cannot kill the bacteria, but when you put these two together, this antibody, this one, is highly effective, can kill completely. And we have shown with our different molecules, different antibiotic combination, the combination antibody cannot take care of the infection, it's huge amount of infection, but when you put it, our compound with this one, it drastically increase the activity and kill all the pathogens of those superbugs, and it can take. So therefore, this is the, another way to take care of the resistance and can take care of bringing the whole drug to the market again to treat the infection and take care of the infection. And then I'll talk about the next part of this a small uh, few minutes uh, where we have been working on developing small molecules uh, which can take care. Uh, this is a synthetic molecule which can actually go and kill the bacteria even within the biofilm. And there are many other uh, problems associated with it. So therefore, if you see the bacterial infection, there are different challenges. One is the bacteria already developing resistance to the known antibiotic. That means you need to have a molecules, need to have a new compound which can go and kill this bacteria which is already developed resistance to that. There is another thing, the problem with uh, this bacterial infection is called the persister bacteria. What happens in any particular times you know, when infection is happening, there are two kinds of bacteria are present. One is a blue kind of bacteria, which is called plantonic bacteria. Another is like a red kind of bacteria, suppose, for example, which is called persister, which is metabolically inactive. There is a dormant bacteria. This bacteria, blue one, they're completely dividing in a body and creating the disease. Now, when you take antibiotic, this, most of these bacteria can be killed. The blue bacteria can be killed easily by the known antibiotic. If it is not already developed resistance like this, it can be killed. And that's why we take the antibiotic and we keep get cured because most of these bacteria kill. But there is great factor which is metabolically inactive or the slow growing bacteria, those cannot be killed by those antibiotics. Now, you have taken this dose of antibiotic and then you are fine, this bacteria is sleeping. Now, after a few months, again, if your body is weak or some problem happen, this bacteria later on come back and start dividing again and causing the disease again. And you think that you are having the new disease, new time again, uh, infection happen, but the same bacteria probably could not able to uh, completely uh, remove from the body. That is happened quite often, and we are trying to understand now. And many things is now people understood about that this is the case, and that means you need to have a molecules not only can kill this uh, blue bacteria, but also should be able to kill this red bacteria as well. The metabolic inactive bacteria and completely cure the disease. That is, and third problem is the biofilm that I spoke about bacteria form the biofilm both abiotic and biotic surfaces onto the, our tissue and once they, they happen this antibiotic known antibiotic cannot penetrate and kill the bacteria and even if they go and kill uh, penetrate and kill the, they will be only able to kill this one blue kind of bacteria this kind of bacteria one kind of bacteria not the other bacteria which is not dividing which is in sleeping mode they cannot be killed that means you need to have a molecule which can penetrate and kill both kind of bacteria so that is a huge problem of this bacterial infection, not only the resistance, but this all uh, associated the infection. Now, we have developed very uh, uh, simple molecules, uh, like this kind of molecule. You can see 
this all bacteria has been taken from the hospital and we could see that these are the blockbuster drug methicillin or vancomycin these are the drug doctor give but we could see the bacteria resistant to this antibiotic it's not active but when you put our compound they're highly effective against this bacteria similarly again vancomycin resistant bacteria some other bacteria which is resistant to vancomycin very high concentrated they're not active they cannot be killed and when you treat with our compound it drastically kills that means the, our molecules can kill those bacteria which already develop resistance to the antibiotic. Now, can it kill this bacteria, special case of that blue and red bacteria, both kind of bacteria that I was talking about here, this both kind of bacteria. We have developed this red kind of special bacteria, the dormant bacteria or slow going bacteria as a stationary phase bacteria or persistent bacteria is called. And when we have taken this antibiotic, which is generally killed, and that's why Dr. Pescai, but now, if you have this bacteria we have, we could see they're not able to kill. This is the, this gray line. It cannot be killed by this antibiotic. But planktonic bacteria, when the bacteria is dividing, this antibiotic can go and kill this bacteria effectively. But when we could see then our compound with the concentration, we can see that this can drastically uh, kill and completely kill after a certain concentration. Same thing in a persister bacteria. We have created the persister, this do slow going dormant bacteria. We have used this antibiotic, known antibiotic, not able to kill, is like a control. But when we have put it, this bacteria, uh, our compound, it can completely kill it. That means this are like a both blue and red bacteria can be killed easily by this simple new molecules. Can it kill when the bacteria we are hiding within the biofilm? Yes, we have created this, uh, this biofilm and we can see different type of known antibiotic we have put it much higher, very high concentration, 64 into their MIC, the concentration is required to kill generally. And when you use our compound, we can see it's not able to kill it. But when you use our compound, even 10 into MIC, it kills completely. And same thing, by confocal, we can see this is a control, huge amount of bacteria, biofilm formation happen. When you use the fusidic acid at high concentration, yes, there is some changes, some uh, compared to the control, some effective, um, uh, can take care of the infection, some level. But when you use our compound, it can completely destroy the biofilm and kill the pathogen. And we have shown in a um, the skin infection of the in vivo mice model, where you can see that this compound can effectively kill this infection compared to the fusidic acid. Fusidic acid still work compared to control. That's why doctor is giving. But it looks like this is more effective compared to the fusidic acid, and that we have shown. That means it can take care of the biofilm associated, associated uh, infection as well. Now. If you look at that, that means we understand that there are various issues associated with the infection, various things need to be done to take care of this infection. And as I said, there are um, few cases we don't have any uh, any, part, uh, any particular drugs who can, uh, which can be given and uh, save the uh, patients. And uh, in India, the perspective, we look at there are various other diseases which are important and need to be taken care of in addition to the infectious diseases, as, as I said. And if you look at in this uh, here, the infectious diseases in uh, India is a hotspot uh, in every aspect. India is a hotspot to uh, to the infectious diseases, and therefore there are various um, ways that need to be taken care of. This one that we need to have a this defined research facility to work on this kind of diseases. We need to have a different type of scientific uh, collaborating effort now, with industry collaboration definitely uh, to uh, take care of these infectious diseases. We need to have different type of funding. Um, opportunity funding uh, which can be uh, used for this kind of diseases and then there is a lot of different level of uh, effort need to be done to uh, towards the production uh, and uh, translation of this type of observation or this type of findings that we have or many other groups uh, in the world is doing at this moment and collectively to tackle this antimicrobial resistance and infection. Uh, with this, I like to uh, thanks um, our uh, group, uh, people who contribute, students contributing to this uh, different things. The people who have already um, um, contributed, left the groups and are part of different now in the world. Um, I like to thanks my collaborator, many collaborators who have contributed whatever we have done so far, and a lot of different funding agencies who has contributed uh, financially to our uh, works. Uh, with that, I like to thanks. Uh, IT Rurki uh, for taking this initiative, a wonderful initiative about the awareness of this antimicrobial resistance. And um, it was nice uh, to be uh, and talk about this particular thing. Uh, with that, I'll be happy if you, anybody has any uh, 
uh, questions or um, comments, I'd love to hear. So, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, sir, for your informative session. Um, if anybody has any questions, they can put in the chat box. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, we asked for various questions from the students using the, let's say, while sending out the invites to them using the Google Forms. So I have a few of them, so maybe you can answer them right now. Sure. Uh, like, Let's go. is antibiotic resistance just about misuse of antibiotics? As I said in the beginning, uh, yes, uh, one of the major issues is the uh, misusing of antibiotics, uh, but there are many other other factors uh, are associated um, with this one. Like, as I said, that we don't have the proper um, diagnosis system point of care at this moment uh, in front of the doctor to decide. Uh, the whether you have the bacterial or viral infection and or even uh, which drugs actually low up the doctor doesn't have they have to wait and many cases in a rural area you don't have that even option to actually get tested uh, so that, that is another thing and as i said there are uh, that we are not uh, the doctor is prescribed for the antibiotics for a weeks or 10 days and we are not taking the entire course of this antibiotic we're just taking only one or two days and feeling better and stop taking this antibiotic. There are many other, uh, the sanitization and other healthcare in a hospital, they need to be improved, the quality and uh, um, and the other hygienic part in the hospital. And we, we ourselves also need to be aware of these things, how the infection spread, what to do and how to take care. As I said, in, especially at this moment in COVID pandemic, uh, we learn many things. Uh, we, everybody will see that we will be wearing the mask, which is very essential. We'll be washing our hands all the time before we put touch our food, touch our mouth, and whatever. Uh, so that way, those those are the things that need to be done. There are many other factors that are actually associated to antimicrobial resistance. Yes. Okay. So the next one is like why aren't we are having more new antibiotics? What might be the reason behind that? Best why are we going to have new antibiotics? So we say that all antibiotics, antibiotics, new antibiotics right now, like you said, like I just mentioned, the low discovery rate of new antibiotics, low approval rate of new antibiotics. So like I guess the, yes. speak, uh, the question is so that's the right. Yeah, so most of the, this whole antibiotic, we can see there are uh, whatever is discovered within the 30s or 50s. Uh, after that, very few new classes of antibiotic has come. Most of the antibiotics are basically semi-synthetic antibiotic of the existing okay. antibiotic, right? So only and the bacteria we are seeing the bacteria has developed resistance to this uh, almost all classes every classes I guess not almost every classes of antibiotic and defined extent still some are working and that's why we are surviving to be doctor are prescribing but very unfortunately some certain cases we don't have any option to actually as I mentioned some cases some of the diseases some of the bacteria cannot be treated at all with the known antibiotic therefore we always looking for new classes of antibiotic different way that we can whether we can kill the bacteria which will be difficult for bacteria to develop resistance and one of the uh, the work that we do from our our uh, our lab the targeting bacteria of uh, their bacterial membrane they are energetic so that it will be very difficult for the bacteria to develop resistance to this antibiotic uh, so that is uh, that is the way we have been looking forward and we are looking and we have contributed in various ways and hopefully there will be many other other people are, are targeting many other other new target and then though uh, probably those will be also will be uh, will be quite effective to take care of this antimicrobial resistance therefore this is this is necessary this is important to have different different classes of antibody uh, so that bacteria will take some time to develop resistance to this kind of uh, yeah new classes mm -hmm. okay so the Next one is like, is it the case that only bacteria changes or even the humans can develop resistance in their body? The resistance point of all is actually respect to the bacteria. Like we don't, we, we, we are the media, um, medium, okay, but we, are, we don't develop resistance to this one, but we bacteria actually are resistance to the antibiotic because when you are taking antibiotic, 
actually you are tied to this antibody go and target the bacteria they either i said say they target that their dna synthesis or protein synthesis or a, a cell wall biosynthesis they are doing right they go and innovate that some way they are targeting them so therefore this antibody known antibody that i am talking about they are actually uh, after using this antibody bacterial changing their structure then changing their uh, those uh, those where the bacteria antibody go and bind it so that antibody become useless they are developing different type of enzymes in their body so they are basically just go and um, destroy this antibody and they are developing resistance towards this one yes it's not like that we develop resistance to antibody bacteria is developing resistance to antibody but we are doing the job we are we are not doing because we are allowing them to develop resistance in certain cases yeah mm -hmm. not uh, listening to the doctor not prescribing the way the doctor prescribe you are not following those things and many other factors that as i said that the while we can take care uh, we supposed to like most of these antibiotics most this antibody is supposed to use for the curing the infection not for the agriculture and other places uh, to be used and we are using right and as i said or even doctor is prescribing wrongly uh, uh, for the viral infection uh, using um, antibiotic uh, so that is not correct it's not, it's not going to help anything uh, but sometimes they don't have any option uh, uh, because immediately you don't have any diagnosis system to see whether whether uh, it is a bacterial infection or viral infection so they they go with the symptom and they are understanding and they try to do it uh, but sometimes if you're lucky it, it works but sometimes not most of the cases is not um, uh, probably it's not the bacterial infection at all and probably the antibody that doctor given probably you may may work may not work because you have probably those bacteria already a resistance to this antibody yes <clears throat> yes so okay so the next question is actually to what we just mentioned that uh, how should we know whether the doctor is unnecessarily prescribing us the antibiotics and also like how should we know like when to take antibiotic treatment yes so just sometimes you know if you are you know, sometimes any doctor even won't tell you what they are using and even even many patient even cannot even ask them they say that uh, they are not supposed to ask you they are supposed patient they won't uh, they consider the patient they don't know anything why they are asking and if you are from probably some uh, people who knows about the things will ask then doctor will uh, will tell you okay this is the antibiotic use and if you ask the why you are using before checking whether this is bacteria viral infection they probably said you know that we have to prevent the secondary infection probably you have a viral infection but the secondary infection and as i said mentioned that the doctor also sometimes they don't have any option in the in front of uh, them that they can immediately check and this infection just we cannot wait for two, uh, two to three days that infection continues growing sometimes they have to take a decision very quickly and go and uh, to start giving the antibody uh, depending on the situation uh, to the condition to condition right patient they need to make certain decision but uh, yeah but there but, but there are many other factors where uh, even even if you see that many patient if uh, the patient go to the doctor and the doctor uh, the doctor doesn't uh, uh, pay, uh, prescribe the antibody or any medicine they think that this doctor is even not good the next time they don't go to, probably to the doctor they will go to the another doctor where the doctor prescribe so there are many other factors are there uh, if you want to understand the whole thing uh, but yes uh, is a common com is a complex thing uh, yes uh, but it need to be uh, taken care uh, to actually uh, tackle this infection And we have one more question on the chat box from Rajeshwari, uh, which is a better antimicrobial target? Yeah, it's very difficult to say uh, which is better. As I said, the last uh, uh, century, so many classes of antibiotic has been discovered. As I also explained, some are cell walls, some are protein synthesis and surrounding. But it's a matter of times, they already developed resistance, all of them, right? They develop resistance you know, all, to all of them. So it's very difficult. Some uh, some of the antibiotics I've seen that uh, bacteria uh, develop resistance within after coming to the market uh, within like a six month to a uh, year. Some of the antibiotic took like a few years or decade, uh, like a glycopeptide antibiotic. It was quite uh, uh, some time in the market and then started developing resistance. There are uh, um, 
pseudoquinone type of antibiotics which uh, actually develops uh, very, uh, very uh, fast even the beta class beta lactam class anti before they introduce in the market developed disease it's like a defined kind of but uh, we have seen but at this moment what we have seen from our research is this, uh, if you target the bacterial membrane um uh, bacteria they were, they were very difficult to develop resistance even over the month of uh, use of this antibiotic we have seen the bacteria not able to develop resistance to them um but bacteria is developing resistance within this non antibiotic that i mentioned within like like a 10 to 12 to 15 processes but where we have used like a month also bacteria not able to develop therefore why we believe that uh, targeting bacterial membrane is a very new uh, approach and uh, quite effective actually at this moment but need to be really established uh, and see the future of the, this particular uh, uh, yeah uh, strategy okay thank you so much for answering the questions i guess like this was the end of the questions we had if anyone still has any questions they can i guess put in the chat box I guess we are not having any more questions, so maybe we can just sure. conclude the session. And uh, thank you so much, Professor Janta and all the participants for being here in the event. And again, sincere apologies for some let's say, technical issues in the beginning of the event itself, which delayed the starting of the event. And uh, all right, thank, thank you, thank you, guys, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.